right, all right, here we go. Actually, I'm still trying to get all of the, the I's dotted and T's crossed. Live streaming is a thing. It is it is uh, uh, a, a complicated thing. There's a lot of things you got to have going all at the same time. So so this is my, my official, well, I guess it, I'll call it a semi-official first YouTube stream uh, because the, uh, the yesterday I actually was testing it out and I streamed a, um, a, a session of uh, IPv6 BGP from the CCNP Encore, just to, just to test it and get everything going. So, so first and foremost, um, why am I using YouTube instead of Twitch? Um, I'm not. I'm sort of uh, just testing the water. I've been using Twitch to do my live streams for a while, um, and there's just a process where I now have to take all of the Twitch content and move it over to YouTube for people that want to watch it later. Um, and I saw, I saw somebody uh, ask in the comments, they're like, hey, where are all the previous ICND2 uh, study sessions. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. So after this, I'm going to move everything over. So, so doing it on YouTube allows me to just kind of go click and then it, it just posts after I'm done and, uh, and everybody can join. So, um, a couple, so, so, uh, brief administrative stuff. Um, we're now, uh, it is what the, the 30th. We're now within less than a month of the expiration of the, uh, the, the old CCNA material. Uh, Cisco, so a few things on that. Uh, one, Cisco or, or Pearson View, I don't, know, I don't know which one did this, but they have announced that there will be a uh, fail one, get one policy on ICND2 and CCNA, both of those certification exams. There's actually a way now that you can, you can sign up, and if you miss it, you get another one for free, uh, which, is, which is awesome. Um, and I, I have a feeling... Uh, this is my second thing. With that announcement in place, um, I have a feeling the testing slots are going to start filling up to where if you're studying, I would really suggest uh, getting scheduled for the uh, testing slot right now because I I can't even imagine how, how painful it would be to be like, I've got to fly to Dallas to, to, to find like like to, to find a, an open testing center because I have a feeling you're going to start seeing a lot of them book up. A lot of people are going after the, the uh, old CCNA. Um, so, so that's it. So we, we've got the, uh, why YouTube, uh, why, oh, uh, certification exam. Um, third thing I, so, so, uh, I, I got into the, uh, the certification exam, uh, as I was getting ready to, uh, to do it and Kaplan, which by the way, this, so if you look on here, if you go to the CBT nuggets website, if you're a subscriber, you have unlimited access to Kaplan IT practice exams, right? And you've got every practice exam under the sun. And I, I found out that Kaplan had actually released a revision as in they eliminated the old ICND2 exam that we were going through uh, before at the, at the end of the year, the last, last, uh, study session I did was end of 2019. It's been a while. I've been trying to get things going in the new year. Um, and it's gone. The, the ICD two is literally gone and they've replaced it with the new CCNA study exam. And, and when you contact them, they're like, Oh yeah, we, we got rid of that one because the new CCNA covers the same stuff that was in the ICD two. So if you were looking for that, it's gone. And so we're, we're going to, and so I thought, well, that's, I guess that's kind of cool. Um, so think of this as ICND2 plus. So this will help, this study session will help people that are studying for the ICND2 exam, uh, as well as people that are going after the new CCNA, so after February. So that's kind of cool um, uh, in that in that sense. So I think that's all the administrative stuff. Um, uh, last thing is, uh, oh, on the on the the chat, you can see the the chat window. I don't think anybody's chatted yet. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say hello. I don't know if it's working or maybe my window. Holy cow. <laughs> it, it was frozen. As soon as I started typing it, it totally updated. Hi, everybody. Jacob, uh, Mike. Uh, it, it was, it was, I was like, man, there's 42 people here and nobody's saying a word. And then all of a sudden it was like, boom, all these, these people having the conversation uh, jumped up there. Um, so uh, Yo-Yo passed the composite, uh, composite exam last month. Awesome. That is so exciting. Um, okay, good. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, hello, hello. Uh, ah, got it, got it. Okay, that's that's awesome. So, so good. So, I am I am going to post uh, one more time uh, that that um, that did not work. Um, so, so I started doing kind of a competition thing. Uh, so, I'll, I'll put this in the in the stream, which is just fun. I mean, I think we ended up saying you'll win a spatula uh, by the time it's done. Done. So, I I put the link in the chat um, and. Uh, and you've got it right there. So, so let me let me uh, let me just catch up on the chat 
Here, I'll, I'll flip back to me. Hi. Um, uh, let me catch up on the chat, and then we will uh, dive into the exam. And by the way, I plan this to be 30 minutes-ish. I figure if we go a little long, that's fine. Um, so uh, Gerald is saying, can someone pass CCNP Encore without experience? Um, yes. Yes. And, and truth be told, you can pass almost any certification exam except for the CCIE. Uh, without much experience, and I would say even the CCIE. And, 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 and let me let me let me clarify what I mean by that because people are like what uh, certification exams are just that they are tests. Do you know the material? Do you remember the key points? And can you do common tasks? Now, if you're talking about can somebody pass without ever configuring a Cisco router? No, no. If that's what you're calling um, uh, experience. Uh, then no. Now, Sanjay just said your YouTube event didn't work, Jeremy. I, I hope you're seeing me. I hope you're not talking about this right now. Uh, I think this one is working. Uh, but yeah, so so my previous YouTube event totally blew up because I, I was like, oh, let me try it, make sure it's working. And then it was like, oh, you streamed, you're done. This this event is over. So I was like, ah, well, I've learned YouTube now, right? So, so you can pass CCNP Encore without experience. Experience being defined as actually being in a job where you are a network engineer right? Um, you can you can pass CCNP Encore and any certification exam, CCIE included, without having a job where you are a network engineer. You just have to have access to uh, the content, which is this, the training stuff, and the uh, and the actual live equipment, right? Um, good. So so let me let me do this because I, I see the um, actually Philip. That's that's actually a great uh, great little note to add there. Um, so. So um, let me do this. I'm going to jump into the practice exam because I know a lot of you are here. Um, and then at the end of this, we'll save all of the questions. And I'll, uh, well, I'll, I'll try and I'll try, I'll try, I try, I try. I, 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 so just last thing I'll say, as I'm staring at you right now, just so you can see where my eyes are looking. Right now, I'm looking at you, right at, right at the camera. Um, when I'm looking right here, I'm looking at the big TV behind you where I can see all of the chat. So when, when you see my eyes go like from here to here, you know, I'm looking at the chat. So when I'm like, uh, <laughs> you understand what I'm doing. When I'm looking here, I'm looking at uh, my screen where I can do all my writing and everything like that. And I, I only say that because a lot of times people are like, what's that guy doing? So, uh, so that being said, um, good. Okay. So, so Mike, I'm I'm all over it. I'm I'm beating your bus. Let's let's do it. So I'm going to jump into the uh, the practice exam. So so what I did is I already I started the practice exam, um, and we will get going. So here we go. Question one: You've been hired as a security network security consultant. The company has had multiple incidents where their wireless network has been breached by hackers. You find out they have Radius authentication server they use for the corporate VPN. You decide to recommend using Radius authentication for the wireless network. Which WPA version should you suggest? If you haven't clicked that link to get into the competition, go ahead. We'll start it right now. See if you can figure out the answer. Let's bring it back. There we go. And I'm, I'm still getting all of my my widgets here worked out. So so looking at this, we're looking for you know a wireless network. So so again, I, and I, you know talking to people about this, 
um, these sessions, they, they, they've told me, they're like, the real value is you really explaining the answers. And so that's, I really want in the new year, welcome to 2020. I want to do that a little bit more. So, so we're talking about wireless security, right? So, so here's my little, uh, Wi-Fi guy, right? Sending out this signal. Um, most people that are only used to using home network equipment are used to this, this, and this. They're, they're kind of all the same thing. So PSK, you want to know what that is. That is a pre-shared key. That's where you literally go on your wireless access point and you say, hey, the pre-shared key is 11122233, right? And then you go to all of the laptops and, 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 and widgets, you know, your PlayStations, everything else that wants to join that wireless network and type that in. The problem with pre-shared key when you get to the enterprise and enterprise being a business network is when people join that pre-shared key, they've got it. And so let's say this, this employee ends up getting terminated, right? Foom, they're gone. You now have two, two options. One, you can, you can just hold your breath and hope that that employee doesn't pull up in a, in a, in a car in the parking lot with their laptop and join your wireless network because they have the key and, and do damage of some sort. And you don't want to do that. So you say, okay, well, we're going to change that key to something else. And that means that you have to go to every device in your network and change that. that, that ah, nobody wants to do that. So instead, we go with option D. That's That's got to be the answer for this one. Let me click on that. Oh, and by the way, uh, they upgraded their exams for those of you that joined me this last year. Um, in the previous exams, they you you never could tell. Is it one answer? Is it 50? They, they actually have checkboxes now, which is kind of fun. So with WPA2 Enterprise, you have a, a radio server. And if you haven't set this up before, it is one of the coolest things because because literally what you do is you set up your wireless access points because in a business you usually have more than one to report in to a server and that's actually done using radius that's the the, the language of love that that wireless access point and that uh, that server ends up using right um, so so all the wireless access points report in via radius and when somebody joins let's just say it's a laptop you have unlimited options of what you want to do here because it's a server. You can install whatever software you want. Now, most people will just use an active directory server uh, with, um, what's the service? Uh, NPS, Network Policy Server. It used to be called uh, Internet Authentication Server. That's So if you're in uh, Windows 2008 uh, world, it's that. If you're in 2012 uh, or above, it's a network policy server. And all that is, is you have all of your user accounts that you create in Active Directory. And there's John, and he happens to be the, the employee that is no longer with the organization. Bam, sorry, John. And when you disable John's account, it immediately disables his devices from joining. So when he joins the wireless network, one of the ways that you can have him authenticate is Active Directory username and password. WAP sends the request via radius. Server's like, yes or no. And at that point, it, it, it dictates whether or not that laptop can join the network. That's why this is so much fun, but but obviously not for home users unless unless you're like me because I have radius running in my house or like you because you'll probably set it up because it's really cool. Um, so good, good. That's, that's, uh, that's number one. Okay, good. Um, so... Let's, uh, let's go on to number two. Number two. Here we go. Which protocol is used in redundant network topology to avoid receiving multiple copies of the same frame? Cool, cool. All right. 
answer on this one. Let's let's work through it together. So, which protocol is used in redundant network topologies? Well, let's let's just draw what that would look like. You've got your uh, two switches in this uh, example, and it, it could be routers, but none of these really apply much to routers. And you have this. This uh, multiple connections is redundancy. That that's that's what redu if this one goes down, then the other one takes over. But the problem with that, we want redundancy. But the problem of that in a switch network is the first time one of your computers sends a broadcast, it starts looping around, and there's only one of those things in that list that stops loops. And that is going to be the spanning tree protocol. Click on that. Bam. Um, so so 802.1Q, trunking protocol, not, not has nothing to do with redundancy. Routing information protocol, that's not a thing. Um, uh, it's just a made-up thing. Uh, Cisco discovery protocol used to discover or see what Cisco devices are directly connected to you. So you can see if I'm a router, oh, I'm plugged into a switch. Um, but none of those have to do with redundancy. Spanning tree is our only one. Um, and there's actually, um, I'll, po I'll post some links after uh, this video is done. There is a uh, big explanation on spanning tree, how to figure out your topology that I did that, that for those of you studying for the exam, really helpful because they're going to ask you to do that. Um, so let's hit the next one and we will go to right here. Question three, you have the following interface configuration. Blah, it's right there. So based on that interface configuration, which of the following things are true? Good. You know, some of you are still answering the question. Um, it's kind of fun. While while uh, while I've I've got people thinking, I'm, I'm getting to jump in there and chat. So so rip. And so I saw routing information protocol, and for some reason, uh, it never connected. Rip. Uh, it's been it's right. So so yes, rip rip routing information protocol. That is a thing. Um, but nobody uses it. So question three, looking at the interface configuration, let's look look at the uh, what options we have here. So so first off, it says the router serial interface is connected using a DCE cable. I would say, yeah, that's true. The reason I'm seeing that is because of this. You've got a clock rate set. Uh, if you've got a clock rate set, that means you're the DCE side. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Er, hold the phone. Where would that be? Only in a lab environment. So, so typically now, now we're we're looking at a serial interface, old school, right? So, this they, they are still around in some places, some uh, very little in the United States, but some areas of the world. Um, and that's where you have here's here's your business, right? So, so out here is trees and birds and everything else that happens outside. 
they have a, a nice little truck that comes up and, and a man comes up and says, hi, I'm from the carrier. You're paying us a lot of money. I'm going to install a jack in your wall. And they say, and that is our point of demark, right? Um, and then you, this is, this is you on the inside is like, wow, thanks. Uh, I'm glad I, I'm glad I paid that money because now I can come in and plug in my equipment right here into a CSU DSU, uh, which is really just a fancy modem. Um, uh, if, if, if you go that old school, right? And then from there, you attach your serial cable to your router, and this is how the old school connections actually work. There's a lot of blinking lights. Um, it's kind of fun, but definitely old. So you're talking like a T1 line uh, coming in here, right? So in this environment, the carrier is always the DCE side of the connection. They are the one that set the clock rate for your connection. So the only time you would do this is either A, you work for the carrier and you're, you're typing that in or, or B you're in a lab environment where, and this is where people will connect their routers using a serial crossover, um, crossover cable. And then one side of the connection has to be the DCE and the other side has to be the DTE, right? This is WAN connectivity, right? So, so the DCE will be the one that sets the clock. So I know a little over explained, but that's, that's what that is, right? Uh, the router serial interface connected with, well, no, that's, that's not, it wouldn't have the clock, right? If that's the case. So router serial interface connects using the point to point protocol, new, 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 and because, uh, it would say encapsulation. So three normally major types of, of encapsulation, you'll see encapsulation HDLC which is great if you have two Cisco routers going direct over a point-to-point -point connection. It's, it's, <laughs> HDLC is not Cisco proprietary, but the way Cisco did it is proprietary. Uh, you have PPP, which is the point-to-point -point protocol, which is, and you would, you would see that right there, encapsulation PPP. Um, or you have encapsulation frame relay. Now, there are others. You can have encapsulation ATM. You can have encapsulation, um, uh, uh, it's hurting my head, X25. Um, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of different protocols that you can have, but in this case, it you know we're using frame relay, not point-to-point -point protocol. And last one, serial interface is administratively down. Yes, it is. So I would I would suggest this and this are the correct answers, and we are good. That is correct. Cool. Feeling good. Feeling good. Good. Uh, let me just look at some of the, uh, doing live streams now. Okay. <laughs> Keep it up, Jeremy. Thanks. Okay, cool. Um, so, so, Hey, that's awesome. Uh, spring, spring, spring mommy. Uh, well done uh, watching this video. Well uh, now, so, so, um, my, my, just, just so you know, my kids are actually in this watching as well. They're, they're, they're sitting right over there. Um, they're the ones running the quiz for you behind the scenes. So, so, uh, we're in the same boat. All right. Question number four, let's go. Number four is which of the following statements are not part of the guidelines for configuring the VLAN trunking protocol to ensure that the VLAN information is distributed to all Cisco switches in the network? You guys ready? Go.
but let me bring it back and let's let's talk through this. So, so which of the following statements and <laughs> which of the following are not always, always, always watch for that on the certification exam? I can't tell you how many times because you're rushed, you're stressed, and you're and you and you're like ah, this doesn't make sense, and then you're like oh, so dumb, not um, okay. So which are are not part of the guidelines? All right, the switches the switches must be configured using the same method of VLAN tagging. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put that as a, as a potential, um, because I mean, to do a trunk, you have to have the same method of tagging, but so this is just Jeremy talking. I'm going to, I'm letting you inside of my brain. If I was reading this question, um, how I would be thinking, okay, it's not part of the VTP guidelines, but, but it won't work without that. So I'm just going to put a question there. Okay. VTP version must be the same on all switches in the VTP domain. No, I, I, uh, that I would say that. So again, so yes, that is true. Um, but it, that means then it's not, you, you get what I'm saying, right? So that, that is right. Um, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going down the same slippery slope. I'm like, Oh, wait, wait a sec. I'm, I'm already just thinking what are, so, Hey, Hey, let, let me do that again. Um, sorry. Switches must. So I would say yes, because you, you can't have trunks without that. And it, cause it's saying what is not okay. Which the VTB version must be the same on all switches. Yes. That, that, that is true. Um, configuration revision num m number must be configured identical. Let me try that again. The configuration revision number must be configured identically on all switches in the VTP domain. And I would say no on that one, which would make it yes. Um, remember the, the VTP configuration number. So VTP, hang on, fly by on VTP. Uh, VTP um, is, is stands for the VLAN trunking protocol, and it is not a trunking protocol. If you've watched any of my training, you know I, I, I think I even sing songs to that. It's not a trunking protocol. It's a replication protocol, which means I connect on a trunk link between my switches, and I can create my VLAN so I can say, okay, on this switch, I want to create VLAN 10, 20, and 30. And what it does is replicate those down to all the other switches so they have VLAN 10, 20, and 30 as well. That's, that's all it does. Um, so, so in order for it to do that, um, it uses a configuration revision number. That's how it figures out who has the latest copy of the VLAN database. Um, it, whoever has the highest number has the latest copy. But it does it, it it doesn't have to be configured. You don't you can't configure the the configuration revision. It kind of does it by itself. So VTP domain name must be the same on all switches in the VTP domain. That is true. Password has to be the same. Yeah. Uh, the switches will share VLAN information. Are operating in VTP server mode. Is are the switch? Hey, I miss the switches that the switches that sh will share VLAN information are operating in VTP server mode. I'm going to, that's, that's a weird one. I'm going to, I'm just going to put a question mark next to that one. VLANs configured on clients should exist on the server switch. VLANs configured on clients, which are, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm these are, these are word games now. So which of the following are not part of the guidelines for configuring? So would the guideline say, VLANs configured on clients should exist on the server switch. I'd say no. That I don't think. I'd say no. That's not part of the guidelines because the VLANs you can't configure VLANs on. So so by the way, three modes: server, client, and transparent. Right. Those are the three modes of VTP. Um, by default, they're all servers. If you configure them as a client. You can't configure VLANs on those switches anymore. They can have VLANs, but you can't actually add or remove VLANs. They only receive replication for the, from the server. So, I'm, so you, can you see how half of the exam, and I guarantee you, you will feel this when you take one of these exams, half of the exams is understanding how they're asking and what they're asking. The other half is, do you actually know it? So, so a lot of people will struggle, struggle with that. I do every single time. Um, and okay, last one, switches must be connected with trunk links. That is true. That's why I said the answer is not H. My little uh, program didn't do that. So I'm, I'm going to go back to F. The switches that will share VLAN information is or are operating in VTP server mode. What is not part of the VLAN? So they can be clients. They can share information as clients. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... I'm going to say I'm not even sure what that statement says, but it seems right. 
I, I don't know how much, I'm curious how many of you are like F let's, let's check it. I mean, what's the worst, worst that can happen? We're, we're wrong, right? Um, it's a choose all that applied. So let me clear that. <laughs> what would I have? I said G F and C check it. Ah, okay. So F R operate the, the switches that will share VLAN information are operating in VTP server mode. Switches as well that no, actually it's right. No, that, that is right. Wrong. I'm, I'm messing with my, so it, switches can share information in server or client mode, right? They can share that. It, I, I, I can't even, I can't even read that answer anymore. It melts my head um, because I, I, I think I know what it's asking. And then when, when you throw the knot in there, I'm like, ah, I can't, I can't process. Um, so it looks like, yes, we were right on the, on the other two, uh, C and G. So that's, that's a, that's a tough, that's a tough question. All right, man, it's three 30 already. I, well, like I said, three 30 ish. Right. Um, so, so, uh, uh, I, I can't remember who it was. The mom making dinner. If you, if you gotta, if you gotta feed the kids, feed the kids, <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Let's, let's do a few more question five. You've been asked to troubleshoot the NTP configuration of a router named R70. After executing a show run command, you receive the following partial output of the command that shows the configuration relevant to NTP. Based on this output, which of the following statements are true? All right, give it a try. All right, let's start talking through this. I know some of you are still answering it on the uh, on the quiz. If you haven't joined that, by the way, feel free to join. Um, there are uh, there are sixty four people tuned into the live stream. That's great, um, and I'm I'm not sure how many are joined to the quiz, um, but feel free to jump in there. Okay, so so you've been asked to troubleshoot MT. Okay, so here we got our show run. So answer A: the router will send NTP broadcasts on interface E zero. Actually. I would say that's true uh, because right here, actually, if, if this were a true show run, that would be indented right there. NTB broadcast would be underneath that. Um, so, so that would be indented. So by the way, this is, this is, I've never seen in production uh, it used like this, but you could have a router, which you can have, uh, you know, getting So here, let, we'll just say it's connected off to the internet, right? And there's NTP servers out here, which happen to be these guys, which I know those are private addresses, but they always do that in practice. So, so you've got your, you know, server one and server two, which is, which is what we have con configured here, right? It's getting its time from there. Then it's actually sending out on ethernet zero slash zero uh, broadcast messages saying, Hey everybody, here's the time. And the, the reason they have that mode is because, Oh, it, it, they, they, they say this can lessen the load that it takes on your on your router because it doesn't have to send it to all these or, or get pulled by all these individual devices uh, but i've never actually seen this done in a production network where it just every now and then sends out a broadcast so everybody on that network uh gets it but let's look look at the rest the router will periodic per periodically update its software clock 
Um, the uh, uh, truth be told, it's not a software clock. So that's that's the, the challenge there. The time zone is set to eight hours less than Pacific Standard Time, which is this. No, no, no. This, this actually is... Uh, the name. So, so when you configure this command, uh, the clock time zone, PSC is the name. You, you, like you name you. I could name that Jeremy if I wanted to. Clock time zone Jeremy minus eight represents uh, universal time coordinated or Greenwich Mean Time. Um, so that that's uh, that's not correct. It would be UTC if that was to be correct. Um, and then the router will listen for NTP broadcasts on Ethernet zero. No, it'll actually it'll actually send them out uh, Ethernet zero. So let's let's uh, check that in there. Good, 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 good. All right. Uh, next question. Let's do. Let's do two more. Um, I've got uh, six and seven. So here we go. Hey, this looks like a quick one. Switch is powered up, and the system LED is lam uh, lamber. Which of the following describes the situation? Ready? Go. Right. Here we go. So we've got um, switch powered up. System LED is amber. I will tell you, amber is never a good thing. If it's on a port, it could mean a lot of things. It could be the port is bad. It could be there's a duplex mismatch or a speed mismatch. It could be that um, uh, there is errors, lots of errors on the port. Um, but if it's the system LED, this guy right here, that's your switch is either booting because it'll it'll cycle as it's booting, or it is completely dead, um, which is uh, uh, probably so. Utilization levels high. Nope. Security violation. That that could be if it was on the port. Um, uh, or the switch is performing normally, none of those. So this, this is, your switch is, is probably dead, if that's the case. Um, uh, or, or um, it's booting up to ROM mon mode, like where there is no iOS or anything like that. Um, good. Uh, I'm curious, uh, Peanut, who is, who's in first place? Elliot? Elliot, congratulations. We got one more question. Who's, who's second place? Tom D. Good, good, good. So uh, I saw somebody say, show the leaderboard. Uh, no, actually, I'm in last. So so whoever is, is uh, uh, last. So I'm, I'm 26th place because I'm not answering anything over here. Um, so everybody's a winner. Number seven, wh which switch will be selected as the root bridge by spanning tree protocol? <laughs> I love it. I, I'm watching all the people in the chat. Hey, the people in the chat, you're supposed to be in the in the quiz, not chatting it in. Um, but but either way, you're you're probably confusing everybody. But but yes, you, you're you're on the right track. Let's let's talk about this. So spanning tree protocol. Let's just let's do the tr traditional spanning tree topology right here. Right, we've got our three switches, and this is what everybody uh, uses when they're they're describing spanning tree. Um, every single one of the switches has a 
uh, bridge priority. There, and there's two factors. There's there's the bridge priority, and there is, uh, and I know I'm, I'm writing fast, and there's the bridge MAC address, right? Every single one of these switches, if you don't configure something, out of the box will have a priority of 32,768. And that's a common, I don't, I don't just memorize numbers like that. That's a common number that you, you see for a lot of things. So they're all tied when it comes to the priority. So it will usually resort to the MAC address, the bridge MAC address to break the tie. But this is one of the reasons to read the question carefully. Because a lot of people say the lowest MAC address, which is, almost right but when you combine the bridge priority and the bridge mac together which which it does and this is what it looks like 32768 dot and then it puts the the mac address of the switch after it that's how it compares that little combination there is called the bridge id and it's the lowest bridge id that is the one that actually ends up winning the root bridge election right so, oh, <laughs> oh, let's let's click it. Switch with the lowest bridge ID, bingo. So, so most of the time that will be the switch with the uh, the lowest MAC address, but um, uh, that's it. So, so our our winner is Elliot with four hundred and thirty five points. Congratulations, Elliot. Um, well done. Who who was uh, who was second place? Tom, and then third, John. Nicely done. Cool. That was that was fun. <laughs> Bamboozled again. Curses, Raymond. Um. So so let's do this. Um. What I want to do is um. I want to go through. And by the way, the the the, the quiz um I, I wasn't mostly pure luck. Sure. Um. The quiz gives you answers for or more points for answering quickly. So you might have known everything, uh. But but just not been as fast as Elliot, for example. So so don't worry about that. So, um. So let me let me hit the so. Chat away. I mean, we've got, uh, so I've got, let's, let's just take the next 16 minutes. I've got 70 people in here and I will just answer whatever you got. Um, so uh, 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 we'll, we'll do that together, right? So let's, uh, hang on, let me scroll back up because there's been a ton of questions that people have been chatting in. So let me, let me scroll back to the last ones that I saw. Um, show the graph of answers in between. I, 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 um, I, I still am trying to figure out how to work the, the, that's why I have my daughter in here helping with the, the quiz. I don't know how to show it because it takes over. It, it, it's a mess. So, um, oh, uh, so so someone asked about uh, NTP, Spring Mommy, was, uh, wasn't even covered on ICND-1 uh, that you took a couple of weeks ago. Now, when you get to ICND-2 or CCNA, know that any topic of ICND-1 is fair game. So, so for instance, I know we're talking about NTP and someone was like, is this ICND-2? It, it can show up on there or it could, it is, is technically, if you look at the bullet list of what exam it should be on, it's on ICND-1, but it can bleed over. So don't, so don't think uh, um, you're safe if you don't get it on uh, ICND-1 because it could show up elsewhere. Um, so uh, where can I take more of these practice exams? So, so the, all these practice exams, um, these guys right here, they are actually part of uh, CBT Nuggets. If you got a CBT Nuggets subscription, uh, just go here to the tools and right there, you've got a ton of practice exams and they just added um, to this list the, uh, the, the, the new CCNA, which, which is, has the same stuff from the old CCNA and all the new stuff. So that one's there. That's, that's the one I've been pulling from because ICND2 is literally gone from that list. So that's, that's where that's from. Uh, so let me go down the list. All right. Uh, D, 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 D. All right. Here we go. Um, oh, uh, Zetherion, Zetherion, forgive me if I mess that up. Uh, like you mentioned in the what now video, I didn't use the information, uh, in the CCNA actually, um, until, until it comes back. That is true. Um, I actually, uh, in here, I'll take you, I'll take you there, uh, right here. I'll go to, uh, YouTube. Um, I have a channel now. It's kind of exciting. So that, that's actually where this is going to go. Um, and on this channel, I did a, what should you do after your CCNA? Um, go watch that, um, because it may surprise you. I, and I, I think it surprised a lot of people because a lot of people kept thinking, I'm going to tell them, go after your CCNP or go get a CCNA security. And I would, I would suggest no. Um, and the, the reason why it's, it's the same thing 
it can it, let me just say this i'm not and i'm not going to say it's like this for everybody but it can quickly lead to what i would call the eternal student someone who keeps getting more more and more certifications and then they're like okay i got them all what do i do with that right and then they get a job where they're doing using like one of them like they they could have done that and saved themselves months of time and and anyway so so more so more on that in that video if you want to look at that um, so, so, uh, spring mommy, thank you. Uh, and by the way, I love doing this. <laughs> I would do this for free. Wait. Um, so, so yeah, I know. I, I, I do really love doing this. Um, too bad I joined late. Uh, that's okay. Um, Philip, uh, this will be posted and I'm, by the way, I'm going to be doing these every Thursday through the month of February. So, and I'm, I'm planning on making them a little longer since I'm not doing them quite so often. I figure we could hang out um, a little bit longer afterwards. Um, so what app do what app do I use for streaming? I use a um, uh, app called OBS, it's free. Um, and I used to use it to stream on Twitch, but now I'm using it to stream to YouTube. Uh, which, okay, whoa, it jumped around. Um, I, uh, all right, there we go. I was supposed to be at the gym. That was fun. That's that's all right. You're working working different muscles now. Are these quizzes on CBT Nuggets? Yes. Um, so I am in a, a net. So Ace on all. I'm in a net tops role right now. Net net. Oh, <laughs> net ops. There we go. That's better. Net tops. Uh, that's funny. Role right now. Working with Arista, Cisco, Meraki, Fortinet, Pan. Is there any value in getting the CCNA, or should I go for the CCNP? Um, well, the cool thing. Good question. The cool thing is you can now go straight for the CCNP. You don't have to get a, a CCNA. I'm actually teaching the Encore right now. And, and uh, so ASONL, what I, what I would say is make it a judgment call on, on how comfortable you feel. As I'm teaching CCNP, it's, it's thick stuff. It's really, I mean, I, I literally, just before here, I was, I was uh, 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 working through this, through uh, BGP stuff. Um, it's heavy. Uh, so if you feel like you could jump straight to it, Go all in. Yeah, I, I would I wouldn't waste it. I mean, the thing is, is if you're using this to say, I've got these credentials, I can now, you know, name my price, find another uh, opportunity, um, uh, then then people aren't going to if you have the CCNP, people don't care if you have the CCNA. They're, they're like, wow, it's like it's like having a CCIE. It's like, ah, people don't really care much after that. Um, how do, how should we approach? Uh, how should we approach to Cisco certification after February? Um same approach uh, that you would have before February. You just can't take the old exams. Um, expand, if, you, if you want more on that, uh, expand on that question a little more. Um, so let's see. DSCP. Okay, DSCP versus TOS. Can you clarify the main difference? Uh, so um, yeah, I can. Here, let me just, I'm just, I'm, I'm going, I'm going black screen on you. You ready? Um, so, so, question is TOS versus DSCP. Um, technically, here, technically the same thing. Um, TOS, so, so in the IP, so, so both, let me, let, me, uh, let me give you the big picture first. Both of these are quality of service markings at uh, layer three of, of, of uh, a packet. So, so let's just say you've got a, uh, let, let's go with a, a phone, right? You've got a phone um, that you're using. It's connected to the switch and connected to a router. And that goes the rest of the way through whatever network you've got, right? As the phone is sending traffic in the header. So, so right here, if you were to, to use a Wireshark and break it apart, you would have the voice, right? You're, what you're actually talking about. And then in the header, in the IP fields, that's the layer three information, there is one byte, one byte of, of information reserved as the type of service or the TOS field. Um, you can either use that really simply as just like, okay, uh, a number five means good. A number one means bad. You can, you can use simple numbers. That's the old TOS standard. Or they came out with DSCP, which is differentiated services code point. When you teach for 20 years, you'll remember stuff like that off the top of your head too. Um, and what that is, it's, it's, and that's where I'll go, but I'll, I'll just say, that'll be part of this. Uh, that's, that's part of the CCNP is learning, because at that point, instead of having uh, technically eight markings that you can do with the old TOS standard, you have a lot more. I'll just say, I mean, technically you have 64 markings that you can use, but, but the best practice say, well, you should only use, and this is where you get into all it's a lot. There's a lot to that. So, so I'll leave that for, for a lot more 
Uh, Muhammad, hopefully that points you in the right direction. Um, so Cooney is saying, I'm configuring eBGP between two IPs configured on a... This feels like a quiz. Uh, between two IPs configured on the physical interface, the neighbor becomes active. However, when I add the update source of the loopback, it goes down. Why does that happen? Um, that's beyond CCNA. I'll tell you why, though. Um, are you... Are you, are you, are you testing me? Is it, this feels like a test, um, but let's, let's try it. So, so BGP, and, and by the way, this, this will be a, a CCNP question. So you've got, let's just say a, a connection between you and the ISP, right? And you've got two IP addresses on this interface. Well, that's not good because it doesn't know which one to use, right? So most people will create a loopback interface and the ISP will create a loopback interface over here and you'll actually create the neighbor session between those two. And so so to your question, Cooney, if that's not forming, why is it not? Um, I would say two primary reasons. Um, one, well, I'll say three primary. One, you didn't, there's a command where you use update source. Um, and I would say that, and I think that's what you said. If I used update source and it's still not working. So two, the routing table isn't, isn't equipped, meaning this router or this router doesn't know how to get to this loopback interface based on the routing table. Um, or third reason, third reason, what would be the third reason? Update source, um, can't reach the loopback. Actually, I, I think that's it. I think there, there is no third reason. So that's, that's what I would say to that. Um, so uh, ta, ta sui. So l l I'm going to go a little faster. So, so, um, rather than get deep into tech, because these questions can go all over the place, all the way up to, I know everybody's here for CCNA. So, so let me, like, I see the APIC, uh, stuff that I'm going to, I'm going to go past some of the heavier stuff. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, Hickson saying, uh, I used your ICD one Q and A to help study. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I actually did do, um, ICND two CCNA uh, study. So I did like five sessions of that. I think I forgot to post them to YouTube. So when we're done here, I'll post, well, obviously this stream will be posted automatically. Um, but I'll actually go through and start getting up all the other streams if they're not already there. I, I can't remember if I did or not. It's, it, it was Christmas. I, I don't know. Um, so to Sui, which iOS troubleshooting, I'm going to, I'm going to pass by the, again, the, the, um, um, the, the heavy tech questions. So that YouTube channel is where I'm at right now. Uh, Spring Mommy's saying, I'm not, I'm not sure whether, okay. By the way, I passed my ICD one. Thank you for your help and encouragement. Absolutely love doing it. Um, Chuck always, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a sec. I just saw a, a question about Chuck. Chuck. Um, so there we go. Chuck always says you need to learn what your organization needs. Yes. Um, by the way, Chuck is probably one of the most awesome people I, uh, I know. Um, he, he and his wife actually, uh, were on a road trip and he, I, I, I texted him. I'm like, I'm like, Hey, where are you? He's like, we're at the grand Canyon. I'm like, Hey, why don't you come by? And so he came down probably uh, a couple of weeks ago, spent the night here. Uh, our families hung out. It was a blast. And what he's saying is you need to know what your organization needs. And I'll, I'll, I will say that is the essence of what I posted into what to, in that video that says, what should I do now after I get my CCNA? Go watch that on YouTube because that, that explains that, that comment uh, all over the place. Um, I won't be able to take the current CCNA. Uh, how's the new one going to be? And I, so I'll, I'll summarize Joel's question. How hard is the new CCNA going to be? Um, no one knows yet because it's not out. Um, I would say it's probably going to be similar to the composite exam that has been around forever. Truth be told, there's new stuff, like as you get into the automation stuff, but there's not a ton of new stuff. Um, greeting from Cisco Live Barcelona. I didn't know Cisco Live Barcelona was happening this week. Hello, Cisco Live Barcelona. Um, uh, good to see you. A current ICD2 is frame relay and net flow on the exam. Uh, yes, probably on, on the current, cause that, that is still current spring mommy. What kind of starting salary range can I expect with my CCNA? Good question. And this is a hard question because it's all across the board. Um, that's why you see the big range. A, a CCNA can make anywhere from, and I'll, I'll, I'll go low cause I've seen it happen. 20 some thousand dollars a year all the way up to seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year, all dependent on two things. One, you probably already know, the experience. And two, 
the type of question or the question the type of company that you're working for. I just I was chatting with a guy yesterday actually who said I am working for a school. I don't make a ton of money, but I love my job. And and so so that being said, uh, Spring Mommy, I would say if you have zero experience and you're coming in, and you're saying I have a CCNA, and this this is going to be the 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 hard thing for a lot of people to hear. Expect to start in the 30s, maybe 40s if you're lucky, um, but expect to move quick. Um, meaning, once you get that experience within the company, they're going to see how valuable you are, and you'll you'll you can usually move up quick. Or if that company is not willing to move you after you you put put in your time, if you will, uh, you can you can start to jump to uh, to other companies and and move beyond that. And that's where I, that's that is the 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 all the time strategy. You know, either find a place you love. Uh, find a place where you you're you're making the salary and you can continue to grow that salary as much as you as much as you need knowing knowing that there's you're never going to get a salary where you're like yeah this is enough it just, trust me you just won't um, and uh, so so go go to to where you want to be and then uh, and then be willing to start saying okay well I've capped out at this organization let me let me look around right so John. I'm now moving into the data center networking. Wow, that's a change. Yes, it is. Um, uh, do you know a good resource for VXLAN configuration? Uh, CCNA, CCNP service provider. I, I actually did some of that training on CBT Nugget, um, but Cisco Pressbooks, uh, that you'll find a lot of that in there. Um, oh, sorry, data center. I said service provider, but, but data center. CCNA, CCNP, data center. Uh, what's going to happen to my CCNT after the exam refresh? Um, it, you keep it. Now, you will still have a CCENT after the exam refresh. Um, it's just you won't be able to renew it unless you take some of the new exams. So when it expires, it's it's gone, right? Um, so one thing that can one thing to mention that continues education. Hang on, let me read that again, Marius. One thing to mention is that continues education will apply to CCNA and CCMP. Yes, continuing your education does renew your your uh, uh, older certifications. All right, two minutes left. Let me let me. Uh, let me go. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going, I'm scrolling because I, I can't keep up. Um, do you think, Major Dutch, do you think the new CCNP enterprise strays too far from routing and switching with SDN and automation subject? I'm going to go straight for the CCNP. Um, I... No. Uh, there, there, so, so to answer your question, because uh, I've, I've been reading this quite heavily, um, it does have the automation and stuff, but this, I mean, if you, if you look at the topics that's in this book, I mean, I, I won't do it right now. Um, go to Amazon, look at the table of contents. It's still straight up routing and switching. They're just like, oh, by the way, here's some info on automation. And can I, can I talk about that for just 60 seconds? Um, automation is not... It's not like, oh, we don't need networking or, or like, oh, now networking is click a button and everybody goes home. That's, that's not what it is. Um, it, and it's going to be a slow trickle, a slow way of moving. It's just, it's, all that's going to happen is we're changing the way we configure things from memorizing commands and command syntax to kind of more bigger picture, click and, and assemble. You still have to have the knowledge, right? And that that transition is going to take a long time in the highly technical environments like data center, like service provider, never, right? Or 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 twenty years, ten years, you know that that kind of thing. That's that, that's what I'm talking about. So so don't don't feel like like oh my goodness all of networking is changing it's just the way we do things is changing that's all that's that's the automation the SDN all of that all right all right that I think I think I think that's it um Mike Mike you're back from the bus uh, put it in the chat earlier uh, I had to leave while you were doing questions thanks for the CBT content help uh, it was a huge help in passing ICND two on Tuesday congratulations Mike um, you're welcome I and again I love doing this. Um, by the way, that's the most popular book. Yes. Cool. All right. Cool. Um, so, so last comment, and this is great for, for you, Spring Mommy, uh, Tasui, because that is true. I know some people that have three years of experience in making 90K without CCNA. It is, it is true. That's, that's the thing. As you, as you get into this technology and become good at it, and, and what I mean is good to the point where you are, you no longer have a fear of it. You love to learn it and you can dive deep quickly that's that's where you really excel on the salary. So that being said, it's 4.01 p.m. I'm going to sign off. Thanks, guys. This has been fun. Talk to you soon.